Hey, 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 everybody. What's good under the hood? Thank you for tuning in and watching the video. It's going to be a bit of a boring one again, giving you a heads up at the beginning. If you do stick around, awesome. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you have clicked on the video and you are a newcomer, please like, share, subscribe, do all that stuff. If you don't want to, that's no biggie. Um, yeah, back at the track, so I didn't go to the track last weekend. Um, I had issues with my radiator, my old old radiator. It was an older, older version, or older style radiator for the X30. And it had a metal uh, twist cap. The radiator cap was a metal twist. Um, the newer versions, they have a plastic um, screw top. So, yeah, it, it was it was leaking um, coolant and it, like it wasn't pressurizing properly. And eventually, the uh, I don't know what you'd call it, but like the the claws that keep the cap attached to the radiator itself um, one of them snapped off so obviously because the claw can't um, hook onto the, the radiator part it just do it doesn't spring and pressurize um, so that pretty much ruined uh, I looked around none of the cart shops supply them anymore because they're old style old version um, I tried Super Cheap, Repco, Autobahn. Um, they supply Triton, like they supply car radiator caps, and the Triton ones uh, are fairly similar. And I bought two of them, hoping that I could do a little bit of MacGyver, a little bit of DIY, and and get it to work. Because I'm, yeah, I'm struggling for money, as as everyone is. I'm struggling for money. I'm trying to do it all cheap now, um, or. or cost efficient now and um, obviously I didn't really want to um, put forth money into something that I didn't necessarily need because the radiator was still good it was, it was still working it's a little bit smaller than the newer versions but um, it was all still working which is the cap well the Trident caps or the, the car radiator caps they're, they're all too small um, Oh, the, the caps themselves were too small, but the the plungers that they were too big for the holes. So it was a lot of mayhem. I was uh, it was a bit of a waste of money there. But um, eventually, I was like, well, I'm just going to have to suck it up and buy an upgraded version radiator. Um, I went to Garage 94, good good little um, family car shop um, located up at up at Wingham slash. Um, Manning Valley um, great people and uh, I got the radiator and the radiator bracket um, as a bundle and he's he's letting me pay it off um, which is great because that was $500 yeah $500 for pretty much to, to replace a broken radiator cap because the radiator was fine but I still needed a whole new radiator and right to, to, to be able to actually have a proper radiator cap um, I didn't really explain that properly but uh, long story short I had to buy a whole new um, radiator kit so I have the newer version now um, does the same as the old version just better and I got to the track so last weekend I couldn't get to the track because um, Cartworks wasn't um, wasn't open and, and a whole lot of um, things stopping me from getting to the track but I got there this weekend um, Cartworks was closed Saturday so that was when I was going to go um, but I mean I got there Sunday so I got to the track tyres were getting pretty close to um, to the end of their their potential still doing rough at the same times so I didn't improve um, Five hundred dollar radiator didn't didn't cut some of my my tenths off my my laps. Not really too impressed about that, but you know, 
you think $500 would get you at least two tents? <laughs> um, no, so still doing roughly same times. Uh, did a few changes here and there. I was struggling with the front end. So there's always there's always an issue. There's always an issue. Um, and this has got to do with people just... People just being people. Like, it's... I'm a very isolated individual person. I, I it's it's not ninety percent of them. It's ninety percent of it is not them. It's just me. Like, oh, I just don't like people, and they talk to me, and I'm all happy and and, and great that they're talking to me and, and all that. But then you just got some people that just, you know, they're just that kind of person, and it was difficult because person that bought the chassis off good bloke but he said anything and everything to get me to buy the chassis and that's where the red flags were showing and I just I didn't really listen to him because he said it was straight he said it wasn't cracked and while we were taking his engine off the chassis uh, I found a hairline crack and I told him I was like mate hairline crack he's like oh I'll just just take fifty dollars off it so that was the first red flag and the second one was I asked him if it was straight and he said yep straight um, but he, he wouldn't really do a proper test the, the way he tested it was he lifted it off the ground at the front end off the ground and slowly dropped it and he said oh both tires touched at the same time that was another red flag I should have listened but I drove all the way down like two and a half hour trip drove down I just didn't want to waste that trip so I still bought it it was it was the cheapest on the market on the market but still wasn't really that cheap well the issue today was um, the steering so obviously the front end is bent um, to an extent I don't know how much but I, that's that's what I'm guessing it's 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 bent um, because when when you turn to the right, like when you when you turn the steering wheel to the right, you have to turn it like 90 degrees. Like you have to really turn it, and it just doesn't. The cart doesn't quite. It's like it doesn't grip. It, it, it's hard to explain, but it just when you you turn to the right, you have to turn 90 degrees for the tar, cart to be able to turn. Um, you turn to the left, you literally move it. See if if, if you're looking at a clock. Um, you literally move it to 11 o'clock because you're turning it to the left. Move it to 11 o'clock and it, 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 it turns like within an instant. Like there's no denying that the, the response and reaction to the left hand turn is just amazing. So I have a feeling that it is bent to a degree where it's affecting the steering. Um, I tried to or not tried, I, I did change the towing. I, I did a little bit more tow out. Um, that helps the steering, it helps direct the car a bit quicker um, with steering and that definitely helped for the left hand side, but just the right hand, it was just, yeah, it was just um, not, not really, not really responding the way that I wanted it to. So I'll have to take it to car works. I'll have to um, get Nathan to, to measure it all up. And, see how badly it is bent and yeah just just people people being people you know you just you gotta live with them but uh, it's just it's difficult <laughs> that was pretty much it I only did about three sessions um, first session I, I messed up the throttle cable and didn't have any throttle so I'm gonna show you two sessions real quick um, yeah that's really all I got to say just got to the track uh, radio issues for last weekend and yeah this this weekend we think or I think it's a bent chassis I'll, I'll see if I can straighten the chassis see if that helps with the front end steering um, other than that we'll we'll figure it all out for the next practice session see if we can find another mistake or another issue <laughs> anyway guys thanks uh thanks for following thanks for watching the videos thanks for tuning in thanks for you know yeah just thanks don't forget to subscribe share and like peace